you can set all these goals with business, this revenue target, open new office, hire 40 new people. But if you don't have a nice routine for yourself where you basically set yourself up for success, mm-hmm. you will not achieve those goals. Right? Don't overcomplicate things. Com- don't come with a goal list of 60 goals in a year. That's just... <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Founder's Diary. I hope you're ready because, uh, you know, new year, new you. And this year we're going to talk about all the things that we want to get ready for next year. Yes, all the goals that we have and how we set goals. Yeah, so uh, maybe to kick it off, what are your feelings right now? Let's like take a temperature for next year's planning. Feel stressed? Feel ready? I think... uh, Always a healthy amount of stress, yeah. but also ready. I uh, think we have some uh, big, hairy, audacious goals for next year. I think uh, terrible term. <laughs> yeah, what is a big, hairy, audacious goal? It's the most <laughs> stupidest term out of a. Uh, f- I think I'm gonna s- say an author again, <laughs> Fern Harnish. This is the right author. Fern Harnish. Never it's I think it. a book about <laughs> scaling up. Yeah. In my times that I um, yeah went to school for a bit but dropped out. <laughs> I remember just a couple of words, yeah. and this is one of the words. I mean, just in time management from Toyota and big, hairy, audacious goal. <laughs> and that's everything that's I also remember. A VC term. <laughs> I it's also it. a VC term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. VC term. Yeah, so VCs yeah, like also say big, hairy, audacious goal. Yeah. Yeah, just, just big goals, like something yeah. that you can put on the horizon that scares you a little bit. It's just a push. Mm. Uh, because in VC world, you should always plan like a a good scenario which is likely to be the outcome mm-hmm. then a good case or great case scenario which could be the big hairy audacious goal and then the worst case mm-hmm. um but yeah it's uh, i think next year will be exciting definitely um so i hope feeling so good <laughs> feeling good <laughs> we're working on all the goals so we can share uh, we can share a couple yeah, trying to turn um, our big hairy audacious goals not into big scary audacious goals no, no, it should no. be the right the right balance maybe uh we can start off with uh personal ones and then go over to business ones yeah whatever let's just get it started Kuhn, what are your goals for next year i think uh, the goals for next year really yeah business and personal is pretty much um, yeah, the same for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think what I've been doing this year really well is yeah, um, being consistent in yeah working on myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think looking at this year, pretty much I've been consistent. Just a couple, two gaps where I was a bit too tired just to bring up the energy to go to the gym and do those things. Yeah. So I think my goal for next year is to be the whole year consistent. So I think from the whole year, I think maybe four weeks I wasn't consistent. Uh, of the whole year, so that's pretty good. But next year, 100% consistent. And what I mean with that is daily plannings every single day mm-hmm. and work on yourself every single day, mm-hmm. whether it's a walk, gym, running or something. But sticking to that is, uh, yeah, is I think my, my personal goal for next year. And of course, uh, yes, investing time in my personal relations, right? Yeah. Doing fun things with family, doing fun things with uh, my girlfriend. I already have done that. It's a bit more broad, but I think, um, yeah, also not important to mention. I'm not just a robot. Yeah. I also <laughs> have some some personal to it, but not too much. Yeah, well, I want to hear <laughs> Sam's, but first I have a question. Like, with those goals that you've set for yourself, how are you going to try to stay accountable on, like, staying on track for those goals for example you want to be consistent but what are you going to do to try to like check in to kind of check yourself to see that you're on track yeah if i say something to myself and Mm -hmm. i really mean it then for some reason i feel really bad when i don't do it Mm. so that gives like automatic accountability Uh, but i do think i also feel accountable because i just program it in a way in my head that if i don't do it like the business goals are also in danger so i try to yeah combine it so that i really yeah stick to it gotcha so since you know kind of like the impact that this has on all these other things in your life you kind of feel that personal motivation to just like stick to it yeah and maybe one thing to add because you can have like so many goals but i think the mm. goal is also just to keep it simple like yeah. don't overcomplicate things come don't come with a goal list of 60 goals in a year that's just <laughs> just have one or two things you want to do uh, and there's a famous saying, and maybe you need to say it, but people underestimate what they can do in a... They underestimate what they can do, or they, they overestimate what they can do in a year, mm-hmm. and they underestimate what they can do in a decade. Yeah. 
So think in decades, not in think years. Think in decades. Yeah, but I, I like what you said because um, you can set all these goals, whether mm-hmm. personally or business-wise, but if you don't set yourself up for success, mm-hmm. it's useless. Like you can set all these goals with business, this revenue target, open new office, hire 40 new people, but if you don't have a nice routine for yourself where you basically set yourself up for success, mm-hmm. you will not achieve those goals. Um, so I think it's actually an important one to sort of first start with, okay, what does my life look like? What is going well? What could be improved? What's not going really well? Yeah. S- first sort of figure that system out. And then when you have that in place, think about the rest because you don't have, you f- have yourself in check or in a good position. Uh, you can have all the goals you want, but <laughs> nothing, nothing will... Uh, yeah, will happen. Yeah, and along those lines, Sam, what are you thinking about for 2024? What's on your agenda? Mm, well, I, th- I think the funny thing is that, um, well, our lives, <laughs> I think they're for 90% almost the same. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because we work sort of the same amount of hours outside of... Uh, same clothing. Same, same clothing. Same, same clothing. Same vibe. <laughs> 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 uh, they could be brothers, they are. <laughs> yeah, but also outside of work which is a coincidence like our interests are sort of on the same okay. in the same way uh so i think also personally for me is what kun already mentioned um it's becoming even more consistent mm-hmm. um in the business but then also finding uh, not per se more time but maybe more intentional mm-hmm. with stuff outside of work so just personal relationship family girlfriend all all that sort of stuff um i think that's that's for me personally and then i think business wise um i don't really believe in yearly goals Mm -hmm. for a business if you're a corporate and you have numbers uh for five to ten or twenty years in the in the history sort of you can it's easier to plan ahead if you're in a startup um i think it don't make sense um, you have also all these people that started a new business. They start with the the business model canvas <laughs> and <laughs> all that crap. Two, two year <laughs> business plan, but <laughs> it doesn't work because yeah, y- yeah it, it's it, like stuff changes every week. So of course we have certain dots we put on the horizon to accomplish during the year, but mm-hmm. we don't spend a lot more time thinking about it. It's more okay. That's where we want to go sort of end of the year. What can we do this first quarter that will get us there? Mm. Um, I think that's way more important than, yes, like strategizing is fun. Thinking about the end of the year, let's brainstorm, think about all the stuff we're going to do next year. Mm -hmm. But you just have to get practical, keep it simple. What are we going to do next quarter? Yeah, I guess, like you said, kind of with everything, working your way backwards, knowing kind of that goal post that you want to reach, and then uh, the best path. I find it interesting that you both have listed kind of consistency and intentionality as like your kind of personal goals, but I feel like for the business as well, it seems like that's also a priority. Um, Hearing kind of what you're saying about looking forward, taking like steps in one direction confidently, and then evaluating if you want to keep on that path or... Or pivot. Yeah, I think it's on the business right. I think right now with instant, like we're on a good track, but we need to keep doing the things every single day that we're doing right now Mm -hmm. because we're going to reap the benefits from it, not in a week, but it can take months, right? We were just talking about SEO, that we were Mm -hmm. ranking higher and higher in certain countries. Yeah, now it's spot 12, but (laughs) in six months it can be spot three. Yeah. Uh, And yeah. It's just being consistent. And I think uh, obviously you need to have early signs of like, okay, people are willing to pay for it. And we have paying customers with instant. So that's nice. So we got that confirmation of unknown people willing to pay for the product. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, doing consistent things to get there. And it intertwines, interconnects, however you say it, with what you do personally. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think about the goal planning for like this next, let's even just say Q1 um, as a startup founder maybe? Yeah, I think thinking in quarters, right? In a week, you can get a lot of work done. I think there's always the famous sentence of Elon Musk. What did you get done this week? (laughs) Uh, Well, I think we get quite some stuff done. Can always be more, of course. We we can uh, never be satisfied. Um, But yeah, looking in quarterly, I think is a good benchmark because you can see like, okay, uh, this quarter, we want to achieve X amount of customers and then maybe working backwards uh, to see if it's feasible or not. Uh, 
one thing to add though, I think next year is going to be also a big year, for instance, because mm -hmm. um, we expect to have the right metrics for a potential new Series A round. Uh, so that's uh, yeah, also on our minds, but it's not for Q1. It will yeah. be probably for a different quarter. Uh, but yeah, you never know. Maybe one of those big, hairy, audacious goals yeah. we were mentioning. <laughs> yeah, but I, thi I think <laughs> it's uh, this. This one is not big, hairy, and audacious. I think this one is also a realistic one. Yes, realistic. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think the big, hairy, audacious one is maybe like empowering a million merchants. But I don't yeah. think there are uh, apps out there that empower a million merchants. One 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 company empowers seven hundred k. So we have a long way to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like for quarterly mm -hmm. sort of goals, what's also a nice thing is if you look at certain goals or at the business, you're also in a always in a certain state, um, finding product market fit or you just found something or things are really starting to work and you need to focus on improving retention. Like there are all these sort of things you can do. And uh, what we also like to do is if we have sort of the quarter, we give the quarter a theme. Um, and I think for us, Q1 is really, I don't know the exact naming of the team, but it's something al along the lines of going big. Yeah. Uh, because we have set up a lot of things in place that are slowly starting to work. Um, whether it's SEO, YouTube content, the podcast, uh, advertising funnels, the product, like how it's converting. So a lot of things are starting slowly to work. Mm -hmm. And I think Q1 for, for us is really okay. Uh, what are the things we really not double down but sort of quadruple down on yeah really go big stress test uh yeah the shit out of it mm -hmm. and see what really works um so i think that's what q1 will be uh, and then q2 like if that all goes to plan automatically you have to look sort of at the results and see where you can improve so then q2 will have sort of a different team um, and that's also why i don't think yearly planning will work because Q1 can go really well. That changes the trajectory of the entire year, the coming yeah. three quarters. If Q1 goes really bad, yeah, then you need to reassess and just sort of fix the things the next quarter. Um, so yeah, that's why I don't think yearly planning works, especially at the startup. And it's better just yeah. have teams for every quarter, focus on that, and then adjust uh, after. What do you think are some common maybe... I don't know, goals or ambitions that you think a lot of startup founders have in this stage that you're at right now? Finding product market fit. Yeah. I think that's the, the biggest one, really seeing good growth, hyper growth. I think that's that's where you work towards. And we have some early signs that it could happen, mm -hmm. uh, but it still obviously needs to happen. And I think everyone listening on a podcast will be the first to know. Yeah. But um, so make sure to follow. <laughs> I love, love the draft. <laughs> maybe even looking backwards for people who are maybe listening who are in an earlier stage of their startup or maybe they're trying to get an investment, like maybe that's their goal or yeah. all of these other things. Can you remember some of the goals that you set back in the day that have helped you achieve what you've already achieved so far? Like, for example, landing VC funding. Yeah, I, th I, th I think it comes back also uh, sort of the themes of the quarter because yeah. you if you look at your own business, you also know with either the, the cash you have on hand or how fast the product is growing. Also, when it makes sense to sort of uh, do a fundraising sort of mm -hmm. tour and try to raise your next round. Um, and for us, that's all. I don't know. When was it? Q. When we raised the uh, last round. Yeah. yeah, Q3. Q3. And it was also intentionally, okay, mm -hmm. this is the time. The product is in this and that state. Um yeah, it just needs to have our full focus. And I think maybe as a tip for, for people, I think having those teams is important because as the founders, you can also really focus maybe on one or two things. Of course, yeah. there are all these things in the business, all the daily operations, but that's that's something you can do. But then besides that, you're thinking in the evening, in the weekend, during work, like I block my times, as I said in the previous <laughs> episode, uh, you can only really think about one or two big yeah. things. And then it's really important and also being intentional about, okay, what do we actually need to do for our business mm -hmm. to get it to the next stage? And for us in Q3, that was fundraising. After that, it was really building out a new product. So that's a different sort of focus. Um, so yeah, I think that will be uh, my tip. Really be intentional. What does the business need? And what is one or two things that we can do right now 
this quarter instead of a whole list like 10 things and everything yeah. like it's not gonna happen yeah i think especially what you're saying about like trying to link the tactics and the, the activities that you're going to do as a founder who has a lot of things on their plate and their schedule i like this idea of having like a theme so at least you can kind of prioritize and yeah. think ahead like if all these requests are coming my way like what fits with this thing that we're trying to achieve right yeah. now <laughs> and it's it's uh i think if you are vc backed company and it's going well you will i think you get 10 VC yeah. emails uh, <laughs> a day or a week. And it's really sort of easy to answer them because it's nice, it's an ego boost. But like, if you're not really raising that quarter, you also don't have to respond to those emails. It doesn't make any sense. You're focused on different things. So it also, as you said, it really yeah. helps with prioritizing because it, it's just not the focus. And you can't focus on all these things, one or two max. Yeah, I guess. What about you, Kuhn? How do you kind of find balance with uh, thinking about, or have you in the past, how have you found kind of balance with trying to align all of the things going on that you could be doing with like these goals that you have? Yeah, obviously it ties a lot into what <laughs> Sam is saying. Yeah, yeah. But I think overall, one thing on the VC stuff, a good learning from Dominic, founder of Storyblock, said that, okay, for, for example, for the VC stuff, only spent a week week a quarter on it if you're planning to race because you can go through it pretty pretty quickly but i think for myself there's a big distinction between working on the business and in the business so working on the business ties more into the teams you have right mm -hmm. getting product market fit so you work a lot on the business to get it done but there's also a lot of operational stuff which isn't included in it but still needs to happen every day mm -hmm. um so i think yeah, that's like the distinction i make for myself um, looking at the, the the big quarterly team, what we have in mind, what are tasks or things I can do to get us there, but also just the operational stuff. So I think it's a bit split into two parts. It's really the yeah working on the business and working in the business. And in the business, it's not going to get you further. Working on the business is going to get you further. So it's also finding the nice, the fine line of how much do you want to work in the business because. Yeah. You can work in the business. You can talk with all these VCs because it's working in the business. It's not going to give you anything if you're not raising. You can talk with <laughs> your accountant for hours. You can talk with, like, yeah. I think it's also something to experience yourself if you're yeah. a founder. But losing yourself into unnecessary details is, I think, a pitfall for a lot of founders in general. Like, going into details that is not going to bring the business further. Yeah, maybe that's a nice way to kind of round this episode off is like, what are you, th what do you think are some of these pitfalls or things to avoid or things that you've learned that have pulled you away maybe from your goals in the past? Something that popped into my mind, which we have learned uh, in the past few years, that everything takes a little bit longer than you expect. Um, so it's good to take that into account when you're planning out your year. Not everything will happen in Q1. Not everything will happen in January. Everything just takes a little bit longer. So I think, especially in the beginning, uh, you can beat yourself up as an entrepreneur. Like, why is this not happening? And why is it so slow? But it's just the way it goes. It just takes a little bit longer. So take that into account when you're sort of planning out your year. Think in quarters, think in decades. Um, but do keep... Um, the urgency and the speed up as much as possible. Absolutely. So have some patience, yeah. uh, which I know is hard for entrepreneurs who have a lot of energy. Uh, yeah. uh, Kuhn, maybe you can give us your last piece of advice on uh, what people can kind of think about or avoid or look forward to when it comes for next year. Um, I think the... Well, I think it ties into what I said. Yes. Try to work on the business, not too much in the business, if you're a founder. Absolutely. Because that's, I think, the biggest pitfall. Like, you can work, you can go so much in the details of the business and this and this and this and that, but is it going to bring the business further? Is it going to bring it to the next stage? I think that's always a question you should ask yourself. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, everything, what we say is our experience. Uh, take our advice, see if it works for you practically and iterate on it. Nothing we say is black and white yes. but it does give you like a yeah a, a nice tip that you can learn from yourself absolutely i guess like everyone has to pave their own road make their own mistakes 100%. but i guess from chatting with you both today it sounds kind of like what coon said you know work in the business work on the business but also work on yourself 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Work on yourself. <laughs> Don't neglect yourself. I think one thing maybe to wrap it up. Yeah. I was, I think it was um, the guy from the sales guy, Alex Hermosi, I think is his name, something uh, like that. <laughs> I'm always uh, <laughs> funny with pronunci- pronouncing names, but I think he was talking about entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Once they're working on their business, they're neglecting their personal health. And then when they sold their company, all of a sudden they go like, they have like a hyper freak rhythm that doesn't make any sense that goes like standing in front of red light the green juice the this and the that like losing yourself like in unnecessary details but i think what we learned this year is really if you work on yourself like you can also work well in the business uh, and that's uh, important not to neglect if you work long long hours Absolutely. So to all the entrepreneurs and founders listening, take care of yourself next year uh, and be sure to tune into another episode soon for more great advice to guide you into 2024 and beyond. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye bye. Right. Showbiz, babe. You were drinking such a big bottle. <laughs> so it's really it's ridiculous. <laughs> that should be like the thing. Like every episode, Kuhn's water bottle is like it's bigger, growing. but we don't say anything. So they have like a small can for you.